Hello, my beautiful people. This is Anna Sheriff again. So in my previous video, we talked about disability, the forms of disability, the acceptance rate, and the myth associated to this particular topic. So I want us to continue talking about it. And today we're going to focus on autism spectrum disability. What it is, the signs and symptoms to look for, who gets it, and, and, and all those things. You know, um, due to the prevalence rate and at the, the rate at which it's increasing is becoming very alarming. According to CDC, it, in 1930s, it was one in every 10,000 child. In 2018, it is one in every 50, 59 child. And it is now estimated that in 2024, is going to be one in every 34 child. So this is why we need to continue to talk about this, you know, so we can, you know, get rid of some of this uh, myth in an African culture. This is some of our, our traditional beliefs, you know. I was speaking to <laughs> someone a couple of weeks ago, and I said there are some African beliefs that we need to get rid of. And he goes, no, he corrected me. He said, we don't get rid of it. We improve on them, which is what I want us to do today. Let us improve on the way we see individuals with disability. Why? Because they are as much a part of us. They are as much as part of our society as anyone else. And they should be treated with dignity and respect. In as much as we want respect, we want to be respected. They deserve the same. We should not discard them. We should not, we should not um, uh, put a, a, a blame on them you know, or call them names. They are a citizen of their own countries, and they should be treated as such. So according to Susan Santiago, autism spectrum dis dis disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder that comes from genetic origin and a heritability of 90%. They are associated with difficulty in social interaction and communication, alongside the presence of restricted interest, problems adapting to change, and repetitive behaviors. Working in this field and working with individuals with autism, mental health, you know, um, I have realized that, you know, sometimes most of them repeat what, according to as this research said, repeat what people say. And the signs, some of the signs and symptoms that we need to look for, one is communication. They are very slow in communicating, most of them. They have delayed response to their names and the bubbles, most of them, they just talk continuously. You know, another signs and symptoms you need to look for is the social behavior. Most of them want to be alone. They really don't want you to bother them. They don't want to be bothered with. You know, um, they miss social cues. And another one you need to look for is the repetitive behaviors. Those are all signs and symptoms. They repeat what anybody say, or everybody, or whoever is around them. Whatever you say, they repeat it. So those are the signs and symptoms we need to look for. Instead of just being afraid as a parent to come out and say, I have a child with disability, based on this myth buster in an African society, we need to seek help. So this is the reason why we need to continue to bring awareness to this particular topic because it is increasing now. The rate at which it is increasing is becoming higher. And as a society, we should be in place to help parents and provide support, not discard them, not discard individuals with, uh, with disability, like I stated, they are as, as much as a part of this uh, society as anybody else. They are citizens of their countries. And we should treat them the way you want to be treated. Thank you.